Today's video is all about running off the grid on a generator. We're going to cover three main points. First, what can you run on the Novo 10.6 off the grid on a generator? Second, more specific, how does the Cat IN V2000 model perform? And third, what else you may need to buy in order to run off the grid on a generator? So stay tuned. <laughs> Let's start with the first question. What can you actually run with a small generator like this one here? These generators are very popular. They're readily available at big box home centers and online, of course. And if you have a small rig like the Novo 10.6, something like this small unit will suit you just fine. Now, my primary goal of using a generator like this one is to extend your stay when you're off the grid. A generator like this one is perfect for recharging your rig's batteries. If you've got a smart charger, like the progressive dynamic model inside this rig, you can go from about zero to 80% on a lithium ion battery in under an hour. A generator can also give you the ability to run 120 volt devices, plugging into an outlet just like this one, you know, whether it's an electric heater, laptop charger, coffee maker, and so forth. Some generators in this size may even allow you to run a small AC, similar to the 13.5 Dometic that's on top of the Novo 10.6. That's a little too cold today for me to demonstrate that, but I will show how the 5K heat strip functions off the generator here in just a bit. Let's talk more specifically about this CAT generator. This is the CAT INV2000. Now there's three main specs on a generator to pay attention to. First, is it an inverter generator or is it an old school conventional generator? Now conventional generators, they're typically larger. They run at a constant RPM. They're usually quite loud. You probably heard them before. Inverter generators like this one, they electronically control the throttle on the engine. And so it'll rev up and down based on demand. And then they're also enclosed in these insulated plastic enclosures, making them significantly quieter. The second spec to look for in a generator is the running watts. Now this CAT INV2000 is rated at 1800 running watts. Now that is the continuous power, meaning what it's able to constantly supply to the outlets as long as the engine is running. And this number is important as it tells you what the generator is capable of running in terms of how many you know appliances or devices it can support. And I'll talk more about that when I demo it here in just a moment. Third spec is the starting watts or surge watts. Now many electronic devices require additional power to get started. You know, think about a circle saw starting up or an air conditioner compressor. And so when they start up, the power temporarily spikes as it starts up, but then once it gets running, it resumes to the normal running watts. So this Cat INV V2000 has a starting watts rating of 2250, which means it can temporarily support a device that requires up to 2250 watts to get started and then 1800 watts once it's up and running. So those are the three main specs you'll wanna pay attention to. So again, this CAT IMV2000 is an inverter generator. It's rated at 1800 watts and then 2250 on the starting watts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up to give you an idea of what it's capable of. This is a cold start, meaning I haven't used it in a couple weeks. So you'll get an idea of how easy it is to start after letting it sit a while. So on the CAT INV2000, it's got a real simple on off lever on the fuel cap here so we're going to have it in the on position and then down here on the control panel we've got red for off green for run and then we do have a manual choke so since it's a cold start we are going to turn it to the choke and fire it up so again i have not started it for several weeks so we're going to see just how hard it is to start up cold like this so here we go All right, so what was that, about four or five pulls maybe? So we're gonna let it choke for just a little bit and then we will go ahead and put it in the run position. All right, now before I hook anything up, I like to let the generator warm up real good. So we're gonna let it sit here in this position, warm up real good and then we'll test it out. All right, so like I said, I'm just gonna let it warm up for just a little bit. It's pretty cold out today. So we'll let it warm up for a few minutes. One thing to point out is I never put a load on the generator when I'm starting it up. So it's always important if you've got anything plugged into the generator, unplug it first before you start that generator. And that way it's, it doesn't have something to contend with as it's warming up and you know firing up there. While it's warming up though, I pulled out a dB meter. I'll give you an idea of how loud it is from different distances so you can compare. All right, so we got a dB meter here and we are going to run some tests and just see how loud it is. So right now we are about three feet away from the base. 
and you can see we're registering about 75 decibels roughly. Now this one does have a, uh, an eco throttle on it as well. We do have that off. I'll show you what it sounds like when we turn that on here in just a minute. But again, about three feet, we're about 75 decibels. Let's go back to about eight feet. All right, so about eight feet, we're about 66, 67. Let's go back to about 15 feet. All right, so about 15 feet away, we're at 61, 62 approximately there. So pretty good. Now let me go ahead and turn on the eco throttle. So the eco throttle basically throttles the engine down. If you're running a light load on the generator, it makes it just a little bit quieter. It will, of course, throttle up as it needs to, but it is a nice feature to have. If you're running something that's heavy on the wattage requirements, I would not recommend the eco throttle because it's just going to be all over the place. So now we've got the eco throttle on. All right, so about three feet, we're looking about 70 decibels. All right, at eight feet, we're looking about 65 decibels. And all the way back to 15 feet. We're looking at 60 decibels. All right, now let me turn it around with the exhaust facing us so you can get an idea of the difference it makes. And I'm going to turn the eco throttle off. All right, so right at about three feet. So about 78, 79 decibels at three feet. Go back to eight feet. Right around 70. And at 15 feet. running at 65. So you can see the exhaust does make a difference which direction you point it. It's gonna be typically louder in the direction that you've got the exhaust pointed. So just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and turn it again. Put the exhaust away from us. Turn that eco throttle on and do one more sound comparison back at that 15 foot range. So we are right at 15 feet. And there you can see right about 58, 59. So really, really quiet for a generator. You can definitely have a normal conversation just like I am right now, even if you're up pretty close to the generator. So that gives you an idea of some of the sound levels on it. All right, so now that the generator is nice and warmed up, we're gonna go ahead and connect the rig to the generator. It's got two GFI outlets here. We're just gonna go ahead and plug it in. All right, so you probably heard it rev up just a little bit, and that's because the converter charger is on. Now I've got a progressive dynamics model on this rig, which is pretty powerful. It pulls about 400 to 500 watts. But right now that's all that's running. I did turn on a bunch of 12 volt devices just to put a little bit of a load on the converter charger. So you see I've got the fan, the TV, the inverter on, some lights. Let me show you a quick view here of the Victron battery app. So you can see the converter charger is pulling about 330 watts or so and it's just basically converting the 12 volt devices and topping off the battery at the same time so not too bad so here's a few considerations to think about when you're using a generator a smaller generator like this one you want to be careful with your load so right now the converter charger is basically the only thing that's running and it's converting all the 12 volt devices over to 120 volt and it's also topping off the battery and I know by experience that it can pull up to a maximum of about 500 watts, just that converter charger box alone. So if we're going to run something that's demanding another appliance, such as the air conditioning or the heat strip, which we'll do in a minute, we want to think about turning off some of those other things that might pull from the generator's capability. And that's real simple. So I'll just show you here on the converter charger. Now this is again a progressive dynamics model. Yours might be a little bit different but most converter chargers are going to have a breaker for the converter charger itself. 
So you can see here on mine, it's gonna be the last one. And so if I switch that off, that turns off the charger. All right, so now the rig is running solely off the batteries. All right, so if we're gonna run something again that's high, an appliance that's demanding and high on the wattage, it's a good idea to go ahead and flip off what you don't need that might interfere. So I've got the converter charger flipped off, so everything's running off 12 volts now. And if we pull up our Victron battery meter again here, let's just see what it's showing. So you can see here it is running off the battery now, it's no longer charging. There are watts being consumed. And so now let's go ahead and fire up the most demanding appliance we can right now, which would be the, the heat strip up here on the AC. So this is the Dometic 13.5 BTU AC and it does have a 5K heat strip on it. So we'll go ahead and fire that up. You can hear that generator. You can tell this is a heavy load for it. So the generator revved up, now we got that 5K heat strip running. And basically I'll just let this run for a while just so you can see what a difference in temperature it makes. It's about 46 degrees outside roughly, so I'll let this run for about 10 to 15 minutes. Come back, check on it, and see the temperature difference. All right, so coming back to check on the Nobo. Now in full disclosure, it's been longer than 10 to 15 minutes, probably about 30 minutes in total. But let's come check and see where the noise level's at now. So the heater's been running this whole time. And you can see about 76, 77 decibels when you're right here off the front corner of the Nobo 10.6. But let's take a look inside and see what it's done to the temperature of the inside cabin here. Oh wow, really heated it up good. Let's take a quick temperature reading here. Okay, so there you have it, 84 degrees. So we started out about 47, and in about a half hour, it's raised it to about 84 degrees. So one thing I will say is the Dometic AC is probably a little bit overkill on the heat strip, the 5K heat strip. And this is kind of one design flaw that I'll mention is when you turn that heat strip on, you can see here that this last knob over here, when you turn it to that optional heat, that's the 5K heat strip. And when you turn that on, this temperature dial does nothing. So I could turn it all the way to cold and it's still gonna be shooting out hot air. So it's basically an on or off kind of deal. And uh, this is really on Dometic, it's not a Forest River issue, but I think Dometic should have made the heat strip also work with the temperature dial so that you could dial in how much heat you want. So a lot of times I'll get complaints from renters that take it out in cold climates and they'll say, wow, that heater is so powerful, it you know made us sweat inside, turned it into an inferno. And uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. One thing you can do, you've got vent ports, obviously, since it's a toy hauler, right there in the front, so you can open that up, let some cold air in to regulate. And then, of course, you've got another vent port in the rear here, so you can open that one as well. And that does help, but uh, that's just one thing to keep in mind about this 5K heat strip that's built into the AC. It is pretty powerful. But all in all, the generator runs the, the 5K heat strip just like you'd be plugged into shore power. No surprises there. Now, in the spring, I will do another video and answer the question, can you run the 13.5 AC off the CAT INV2000? So I will do another video in the spring when it warms up a little bit. But let's go ahead and shut off our generator now. Before we do so, we wanna turn off the load by turning off the 5K heat strip. So we're just gonna go up here you can hear the generator right away ease its throttle a little bit and then we just hop down here to the the knob the switch here on it and we're just going to go to the red here all right last let's talk about what you need to run off the grid on a generator so obviously you need the generator now i chose the cat inv 2000 i've had it for about two years it's worked flawlessly for me. I've also used it on the, the fifth wheel over here to run the microwave when we do rest stops and stuff on family trips. And it works great. It's super light, easy to cart around, had no issues with it whatsoever. 
it seems to really handle the loads well. And so definitely recommend that. There's obviously a lot of other brands out there. I would stick to one of the major brands. You know, Honda's probably the king of the hill with these small generators. Uh, I've had one myself and I can say they really, they spare no expense. They really are top of the line. But sometimes you can get, you know, 90% of the performance and features of a Honda for maybe 50, 60% of the price. And I think that's really the story here on the CAT INV2000. So shop around a little bit, but I would stick to a Honda, you know, Yamaha, Westinghouse, Generac, CAT, one of those brands, just to make sure that you really get something that performs at the end of the day. And if it helps to know, I think I paid about $650 for this CAT INV2000 at the big box store. Now again, the weight is a consideration for sure. This one's super easy to cart around. And it's definitely something you wanna think about. If you get a big, powerful generator that's so big that you can't pull it out of your truck with one person, it's gonna be a pain and eventually you're just not gonna use it. So definitely get something that's easy for you alone to lift out of your truck, out of your car, and that way you can tote it around and it's not a big deal to, to move it here and there. And then beyond the generator itself, all you need is a pigtail like this one, some people call it a dog bone, but basically this pigtails into your 30 amp inlet on the rig itself. And then it's got a conversion there for 120 volt, 15 amp. I prefer these that convert off of your rigs inlet as opposed to having to, you know, drag out your giant 30 amp cord every time and then convert at the end of your 30 amp cord to 120 volt. So again, this will plug directly into your rigs 30 amp inlet and then convert to 120 volts, 15 amps right there. And then all you have to do is get a, a nice heavy gauge extension cord. It can be six foot like this one here. Uh, definitely get something that's thick though. Again, this one's a 12 gauge, real heavy duty, since it is carrying all the power to the generator there. So again, all you really need is, in addition to the generator is the pigtail and the dog bone adapter here, and then your extension cord to connect the two together. And I will include links in the description below of where I bought these specific ones if you want to get identical ones. Most of them I found are only available online. Believe it or not, a lot of the local camping stores and RV shops, they seem to carry the adapters that connect to your 30 amp power cord, but not ones that will connect directly to your rig and convert. So I will include links in the description for where you can get an adapter just like that one. All right, a couple other considerations as far as the gas that you use and these little engines, you wanna make sure you put in either a stabilizer in your fuel or use ethanol-free gas, just one of the two. Because what happens if you're like me, you use the generator and then it sits for several weeks, maybe months before you use it again. And if you don't stabilize that gasoline, it's just gonna gum up and get all nasty and, and you know corrode the inside of the engine and make it hard to start next time. So definitely use ethanol-free gas or put stabilizer in your unleaded gas. The same kind of gas that you might put in a four-wheeler or your lawn tractor, lawn mower, that kind of thing. So definitely recommend that. And then as far as maintenance go, if you use it like I do, where it's fairly infrequent, I just do once a year oil change, put synthetic oil in there, check the air filter. Some manufacturers recommend you replace it every one year, every two year. Super easy to do all those things. And then of course your spark plug. So that's the basic maintenance on these guys. Most of them are really straightforward. All right, that's it for our video today. If you found it helpful, be sure to click that thumbs up button. I will be doing a video on the inverter install coming up soon, so stay tuned for that one. And if you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button. There's gonna be some really cool upgrades and mods coming up in this series. Again, I will include affiliate links in the description below if you're interested in purchasing the items featured in this video. And last, if you're not seeing something in these videos that you'd like to see, leave me a comment. Again, thanks for watching.